Hey, hey there, Canadian Wealth Secrets Seekers. It's Kyle here for another Friday edition of Canadian Wealth Secrets Secret Sauce. And today we're going to be talking about a question that I get quite a bit because on this show, we talk about some unique strategies that we utilize in our own wealth building journey, both personally and corporately, through the use of permanent life insurance policies, specifically permanent whole life insurance policies. And today I want to unpack a common question people get about insurance in general, and this is about the death benefit, um, in terms of whether it is taxed or not. Uh, We talk a lot about permanent insurance, but also term insurance. And let's talk first on the personal side. So on the personal side, you are going to contribute after tax dollars from your personal pocket. So maybe you earned a certain salary, let's say you're in a 40% tax bracket, or maybe it's a 30% tax bracket on average, so your average tax rate's 30%. You're paying with 70 cent dollars because every dollar you earned, you lost 30% to taxes. That leaves you with 70 cents left out of those original 100 cents. So You've already been taxed, and then you're putting it into a premium, and basically the insurer is going to take that money, they're going to try to invest it and grow it and do all the things that they do to try to make money, and if you pass away while that policy is in force, they're going to pay out a tax-free death benefit. So the government already got their tax on the money you had earned. The same is true inside of a corporation. So when we're talking about term insurance, We are paying after corporate tax dollars, which typically on that first $500,000 for our small businesses, our CCPCs, you're going to pay a lower tax rate. Here in Ontario, it's 12.2% currently. So you're paying with like 88 cent dollars. So you're getting a deal here. The same is true when we go to the permanent side. I can buy a permanent policy personally, use Uh, After personal tax dollars, typically a higher tax rate, in order to buy that policy, I could buy that same policy inside of the corporation on key people like shareholders or, you know, those who are important employees in that business. So let's think about this, though, for our business owners. A question we often get is, how does buying insurance inside of a corporation, how is that uh, a tax benefit or is it a tax benefit? And the answer is yes, there is a massive tax benefit benefit. This is both true for a term policy or a permanent policy. A term policy, again, typically if it's a term 10, term 20, you're probably going to cancel it before you pass on. So it's there for protection purposes, can be there for a buy-sell agreement. It might be there for just protecting your family. It's better to buy that policy inside your corporation if you have active earned income in there than buying it personally, because now you're pulling money out of the corporation, getting taxed on it, and then putting it into the same policy. What ends up happening inside of a business is there's this notional account called the capital dividend account. They call it a CDA, the capital dividend account. And basically what it is, is it's this account that just tracks how much tax-free dividends you can distribute to shareholders. Now, this would be, you know, in the old school days, you know, before Trudeau raised the uh, the current capital gains taxes for Uh, corporations, the inclusion rate was 50-50. So 50% of your capital gain was recorded in the CDA that could be removed from the company tax-free to shareholders. Well, the beauty is with a death benefit is that the net death benefit actually allows you to come or allows the shareholder, I should say, to pull that death benefit out tax-free to the shareholders. So if you are the only shareholder of that business right now and you buy a permanent or a term policy, but let's talk permanent here for a second, you buy a permanent insurance policy on your own life, the company owns the policy, not you personally and not your spouse and the beneficiary is not your spouse. It's not your kids. It's not, you know, a charity. It's the company that benefits here. So what ends up happening is you're using corporate after-tax corporate dollars, right? So maybe it's 88 cent dollars or, you know, depending if, it, if it's a company that's, you know, earning much higher than 500,000 in profit per year, might be, um, you know, using around 74% or 74 cent dollars, depending, right? 
um, those dollars are going into the policy. And then when you pass on the net death benefit, well, actually the whole death benefit is going to go to the company. And then the net death benefit is going to be able to come out. Now, why I say the net death benefit is that basically what you have is those original retained earnings dollars are still due to be taxed. However, over time, there's a cost of insurance that you get to essentially deduct against those retained earnings. So the longer you go, the closer to the average age of death or the average age of death for you know an individual goes, the more likely it is that you're going to pay actually a zero tax on any of that uh, retained earnings that you originally had put into this policy. But if let's say I put $100,000 in, let's pull up a, a scenario here for our YouTubers up on the screen. Here it is. Um, we've got a scenario here where we're looking at a policy that can be overfunded to $100,000. The minimum that can be funded is about $37,000 per year. This person could put $100,000 in. If they put $100,000 in in year one of this policy and they pass away in year one, it could be the very next day after it goes in force, the death benefit's going to be about $1.8 million and about $1.7 million is going to be credited to the capital dividend account. So that means what is happening is $98,957 of the premium that actually went into the policy is still due to be taxed. And there's a little bit missing from that 100,000 and that's the actual cost of insurance that you can essentially deduct off of the money you had put into this policy. And the rest of the death benefit, that like 1.743 you know, million dollars is allowed to be taken out tax-free by shareholders. Now, it doesn't have to be taken out in that year. It can be taken out whenever you choose or whenever the new shareholder chooses. So if now if the shareholder is your spouse or if it's a child or whoever those shares are passed on to, the shareholder can now take all of it at once out tax-free. They can take a portion out this year, or a portion out next year. They can do whatever they choose with it. So as we go on, if I look at this particular policy and we get to, you know, this person was 45 when they put this policy in force. If they did this, they contributed 100000 for 10 years. So they put a million dollars of retained earnings into this particular policy. And, you know, it continues to grow over time, over time. And let's say they live to... Uh, age 80 here. Uh, hopefully it's longer, right? We're not, you know, any any ill will here. But if we go to age 80, uh, this person contributed for 10 years, but this is 35 years after they started the policy. The policy is now uh, has a cash value of 3.75 million or so. And the total death benefits just north of 5 million. And you'll notice that at age 80, almost all of the death benefit is going to come out through the CDA tax free. So you're going to see over here the CDA is 5,022,000 or so, and the total death benefit was 5,086,000. So really, only $64,000 of the original $1 million that was put in in retained earnings is still due to be taxed by shareholders whenever they take that money out. The other five plus million dollars that is in the corporate accounts now can be taken all out by shareholders as a tax-free dividend, or they can take out little chunks along the way. So the capital dividend account is something to help you track what is allowed to come out tax-free and you get to declare what money is coming out and whether it is uh, from the capital dividend account, meaning it's tax-free, or whether you want to be taxed. Now, I'm not sure why you'd want to be taxed, but if let's say you're in a really low tax year or a really low tax bracket and you know you want to take out $50,000 just to kind of take advantage of a low tax bracket for that particular year, anything above that you might choose to say take out as a tax-free dividend through the CDA and use that deduction. So this is one of the many ways that business owners can not only help for estate planning to deal with these retained earnings, but of course, while in the company, we could be leveraging that uh, cash value for asset purchases, essentially creating more tax problem for themselves. It's a good problem, right? When you have more tax issues, that means you have more assets, you have more income. 
And these types of policies are how you mitigate those issues, both now and in the future. Of course, as those policies get much larger, there's other leveraging strategies that we can explore in a compliant way to ensure that you are minimizing your personal taxes as well as you engage in this particular process. So that is this week's secret sauce episode is how we can use the magic of insurance to help us deal with retained earnings inside of a corporation. Those low corporate income tax dollars on active income are only helpful to you while the dollars are inside your corporation. When you pull them out as income, you now just become like everyone else and you're in the regular old T4 game of moving up the tax brackets. So how do we do this more efficiently so we can grow and compound our wealth inside our corporate structures while also giving an exit strategy for those retained earnings to either yourself through leverage strategies or to a future shareholder for legacy through the capital dividend account. That is your secret sauce for today. If you are not exploring insurance strategies as an incorporated business owner, then you are leaving a massive, massive tax opportunity for yourself on the table, reach out to us anytime over at canadianwealthsecrets.com forward slash discovery, and we will sit down with you, analyze your situation, and see how we can help you make sure you take the tax target off of your corporate retained earnings. Take care.